right now on the Newsmaker Hotline, former Speaker of the House, former presidential candidate, a man who has brains leaking out everywhere and thinks big <laughs> thoughts. Former Speaker of the House, Newt Gingrich, is on the line. How are you, sir? Well, I felt pretty good until you have me leaking all over the place. <laughs> no. now, I gotta, now I have this terrible self-image. No, no, no. I, listen, we got we got to get down to some stuff here right away because uh, there's a big debate going on in the Republican Party and Republican circles about what the party should be. We just uh, had an interview uh, yesterday with Lieutenant Governor Bill Bowling uh, in Virginia. He's thinking about running it as an independent. He says he wants to appeal to moderates. He says the party has been hijacked by those with rigid ideology. Speaking, of course, they're about the Tea Party. It's, it's, a, it's one little debate that we're having nationwide. And Carl Rove finds himself right smack dab in the middle of it. Where do you come down on all that? Well, first of all, I think that uh, Lieutenant Governor Bowling's big complaint is he didn't get the nomination. <laughs> uh, so he suddenly decided since he didn't get the nomination... You must be something else. This happened in Florida, where you had an incumbent governor run for the U.S. Senate. He lost to Marco Rubio, uh, and then all of a sudden decided maybe he, in fact, was a Democrat. And so he ended up with the Democratic National Convention. So I think people shouldn't confuse personal ambition with uh, some kind of great conflict. We have 30 Republican governors. They include 315 electoral votes. Uh, I, I would suggest to you that the governor of New Jersey certainly represents a very, very different view of the future of the party than does, say, Rand Paul. And so uh, I think that it's it's uh, a little bit much to automatically assert that you can't be an effective uh, problem solver in the Republican Party, and Governor McDonald has, has been a good example of that. But I do have, if people go to GamersProductions.com, I do have a paper which uh, very strongly outlines 23 different areas Republicans need to do better in, and I think that w there's no question we have to... Uh, Think about the loss of 2012 and 2008, and for that matter, go back to 2000 and 1996 and 1996 and recognize there's some significant ways in which Republicans uh, have got to get back in the game at the presidential level, Well, fair, or we're just going to keep losing. Fair enough, but the debate is going on right now is, is the other side of that question is what Karl Rove has said, that we, we need to go for more moderate people, people who can maybe as conservative as they can be but still get elected, and he's getting well, roundly just, lambasted just, for that. Well, no, no, but, you know, but he, he didn't say that. What he said was he was going to raise millions of dollars from billionaires, and he was going to pick who was appropriate and who wasn't. I mean, the, the issue with Carl is not a personality issue. It's a question of do you really want to live in a country where one or two guys sitting in Washington, D.C., try to pick candidates in 50 states? And the fact is, while he points to Indiana and Missouri, where our candidates did some pretty dumb things, we also lost in Montana, North Dakota, Wisconsin, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Virginia, and Florida. Now, how come if, if Rove was so brilliant, how come we lost all seven of those seats? Yeah, that's a, that's a fair question, and it's what continues to be asked of Carl Rove. Uh, New Gingrich, by the way, I want to just let everybody know, today at 2 p.m., Mr. Gingrich is going to be teaching a live online course. This is so cool. You're going to be live from Mount Vernon, and the course is on George Washington in honor of his two, 281st birthday. Well, you know, with all the mess we're in, with the sequester and everything else, it struck me that having written three novels about Washington in the Revolutionary War, that, that to teach, you know, what are lessons we could learn on his birthday from him? It's all available at, at EnglishProductions.com, and uh, it'll be a free. Anybody who wants to in the country can take it. It'll be on at 2, and then we'll, we'll, we'll have it available from then on. And uh, I, I think it's just occasionally useful to take a deep breath and turn to folks who've done some br brilliant things, as Washington did, and then uh, be in a position to learn from them. Well, and, and, and actually, I'd like to bring this back to this conversation we're having, because one of the things that Lieutenant Governor Bowling said yesterday was that the party has become uh, not just conservative, but ideologically driven conservative. And I, I, maybe you could clear this up for me. I mean, George Washington was an ideologically driven man. Ronald Reagan well, was an ideologically driven man. Is there something yeah. wrong with being driven by ideology? No. no and let me, let me just correct your point about Lieutenant Governor Bowling. So I, I would argue isn't motivated by any moral cause. He's motivated by ambition, and he couldn't win the convention. And so now he's running around basically peddling personal ambition as though it's, it's a moral cause. fact is, you look at a Bobby Jindal, you look at a Nikki Haley, uh, you look at uh, Mitch Daniel. We're just finishing up a 90-minute course that we did with Mitch Daniel on innovation in government, a brilliant innovator. You look at Haley Barber, you look at Rick Perry. I mean, we've, we've had very successful governors, John Kasich, Scott Walker, you go around this country, 
We have, we have uh, 51 percent of the country now lives in states, 24 states, that have a Republican governor and a Republican legislature. And guess what? They all have lower taxes. They all have better economies. Then you go to a place like California, New York, or Illinois, where you see the public employee unions dominate and you see left-wing Democrats dominate. They have high taxes. They have a big pension crisis, and, and they're going broke. Yeah. Uh, Newt Gingrich, uh, you, you know a little bit or two around Capitol Hill. You, of course, were Speaker of the House, and such a, a major topic of discussion here has been these sequester cuts that are looming right now. And I wonder, you know, we're hearing two sides here. Of course, it's affecting so many people who listen to this show because they work in the Department of Defense, and it's really just a hatchet job in the way the cuts are going to happen. Uh, but at the same time, you hear from some people who are saying these cuts in the grand scheme of things are not that big at all, and we should be doing more. If you were Speaker right now, if you were John Boehner, would you be doing what he's doing, which is sort of waiting for the president to take the lead, or would you be proactive? No, I'd be proactive. What I would do is set up a website call, called A People's Sequester, and I would ask every American, including all the folks who are government contractors and all the folks who are civil servants, who are going to be directly affected, and I say, look, if the current sequester is about as stupid as it gets, and Obama is working deliberately to make it dumber because he wants to maximize the pain to the American people to win political points, uh, I would say, you know, what if we turned that around? What if we decided to have a smart sequester, and we had people suggest, what, what are the least painful things we could do to save money? What are the most effective ways? And when the Navy announces brandy that they can't send a carrier to the Middle East because of the sequester, that is just plain baloney. That's public relations. There are lots of places to find savings. Uh, you know, when the president flies down at, at public expense to golf on a weekend so, so he and his buddies can have a good time, uh, you take the total cost of that trip, which is trivial in the sequester, but symbolically it's not trivial at all. And I think the White House should also be a part of this sequester. And uh, if there's going to be any layoff at the Pentagon, there'll be a bunch of layoffs at the White House. You know, you're right about this. There's some gamesmanship going on. We're talking about a 1% to 2% cut in a $36 trillion budget. And, and if you listen to people, oh, my gosh, you know, it's the end of the world as we know it. Yeah, planes will stop in midair. Well, you know, and they may because the president's going to do everything he can. You know, why would you lay off TSA workers to maximize pain for the traveler so the president can say Republicans did this to you? when you could be laying off bureaucrats at the Department of Labor at, that nobody would notice were missing. That's right. <laughs> exactly. All right, Newt Gingrich, thanks so much for joining us. And again, I want to remind everybody, newuniversity.com. You can get this live online course live from Mount Vernon. It's a course taught by Speaker Gingrich about George Washington in honor of his 281st birthday. That's, That's a special, cool. yeah. special.